Like, I remember the time Brian took me, the kids, himself and her out to Phillip Island for a birthday to have a barbecue and all that. And it was during summer. You know, it was pretty hot. <laughs> Stinkingly hot. And we had a good time. We are having fun. The kids were enjoying themselves. Went for a swim. And these special fucking weird bathers I was wearing these pants. They were getting a bit uncomfortable on me because they were wet. So I, I even asked her for permission because I knew Brian was there. And I asked her for permission, can I take it off? Which means I would be wearing nothing but my underwear and a t-shirt. I always ask for permission. Because if she says, no, Clara, leave it on. I feel uncomfortable with you walking around, you know, with nothing but your underwear and your t-shirt on, wet. If she said that, I would have respected her wishes and I'll kept them on. But she said, she gave me a weird look, thought about it for a while. And she said, yeah, it's okay. So I took it off. See, that's the type of person I am. I ask for permission. I don't just get naked and frolic around in front of a man. Do you know what I mean? Like, I asked her. I pulled her aside, made sure he didn't hear anything because he was busy. He was frying the kangaroo sausages on the barbecue at that time. And I walked over to her and just asked her. You know, I did the right thing. She would be very pissed off if I just started taking off my clothes and shit, <laughs> frolicking around. Like, come on. People out there tell you. I don't know what she truly thought, you know, but honestly, I think her own mind, you know, played tricks in her half the time. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, man, this is a killer. Oh, it's so nice. Oh, it's beautiful. Pineapple. Mm. Oh, baby, it's a real turn on for me. Absolutely love that. I was having a massive orgasm that lasted nearly two hours with the other one that I drank last night, the the, um, <laughs> the peach one. But Dad took it and he just, he took a sip. You should have seen him. He took a sip and he went like this. <laughs> and he's like, oh, he was in heaven. <laughs> He absolutely loves all the monster flavours. And now we've got some more coming this afternoon between 4 and 9 p.m. The shopping delivery is coming. And we've got three. He got three different ones. The something strawberry one from what I can remember. The purple one. And another one. I've forgotten which one that was. Yeah, you got three four packs that are coming. So that's going to be good. So we'll be putting them in the fridge, that's for sure. And Jigga's just had a conversation. Now, I just hope to never dream of her again, because that's really fucking annoying. I dreamt of my ex-friend this morning, and I'm not happy about it, because, you know, I still didn't get answers. <laughs> and you know what? Fuck it. I don't want any answers. No, the more I think about it now, it's best to just leave things be. Let her go her own merry way and let me go mine. You know, like, there's no point. There's no point in, you know, rehashing it with her because I'm probably going to be lied to again to my face. Who knows? Like, oh, you know, am I going to be truly wasting my fucking energy where I can be putting my energy towards other things that are more worth my while? <laughs> You know, that's what I'm starting to think. It's like, what's the fucking point? Maybe she doesn't want to change certain aspects of herself that she knows deep down is extremely toxic and that can destroy relationships, you know, friendships and more, you know, deeper than that. You know, if she's with a man, you know, like she can become very violent and her drinking issues and her drug issues, like there's a lot she needs to change. She needs to heal her, you know, maybe she's got severe abandonment issues as well, trust issues that are very bad. Like from time to time, okay, you know, everyone has trust issues to a certain extent. But I don't know, she's got a lot to work on, you know, and her own mental health, you know, making sure she takes her medications and doesn't skip a dose. You know what I mean? Like with her bipolar disorder, okay. You gotta make sure you take your meds and not abuse it by doing drugs on top of it. 
like weed, alcohol, you know, speed or whatever drug. And to find out information through her kids, disturbing information about her was annoying as well. Because I'd rather hear all that horrible stuff from the horse's mouth, like adults, you know. Not 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 young kids, teenagers, young teenagers telling you all, all that information should be coming from the horse's mouth. You know what I mean? I didn't like that. It made me feel like she was like, I don't know, trying to communicate through her kids to me. And I found that to be annoying. It's like, nah, talk to me head on about whatever is going on and tell me the full truth, the full facts. Not to, you know, only tell me half-truths because you're scared of what I'm going to say and how I'm going to react. You know, how do you expect people to react? Of course they're going to be disappointed. But at least they will respect you for being open and honest about it. You know, and give them time as well, breathing space to process it. And then when they're ready, let them come to you. You know what I mean? She didn't even bloody do that. <laughs> You know, look, I understand there was a period of time she was in an institution for a while and she could not contact me. I understand that. But she could have found another way. She could have written letters or she could have written a letter to her brother and said, listen, pass this on to Clara, you know, when she comes down, you know, or if you bump into her, pass it on. There's ways. There's ways. So I'm, I'm the type of person that will always find a way to communicate no matter what. Even if I'm locked up in prison or in jail somewhere, I will find a way. I won't give up. I will find a way. Because a lot of shit went down for her, but she's got to understand that it's her own behaviour that, you know, she contributed to that, to what happened. Like you, should, you can't point the finger and blame everyone around you for the reason why you're the way you are. Most of it is your own doing. You've got to take responsibility for your, for your own actions, for the things that you've done. You've got to realise that you can't blame other people for your misfortunes. It's the re that's the honest truth. I can't blame people for the reason why I smoked. That is my fucking choice. I knew very well that smoking is no good for me. But I chose to do it. So whose fault's that? Mine. I can't turn around and blame my parents. I can't turn around and blame Chica. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on now. You've got people that are going to take responsibility for their own negative behaviours and for the reasons why shit hit the fan for, their, for, them, for themselves, for their own life. I can't blame anyone but myself for the bad things that have happened in my own life to a certain extent. But if someone for no reason targets me and starts on me and starts treating me like shit, well, no, that's not my fault. You know, if I know that I've been 100% open, genuine and real with that person, it's not my fault. It's something wrong on their end with them, their own paranoid thoughts and things that weren't reality, you know. And I, oh, my God. Hang on a second. What are you doing? Oh, you want some chilli? Well, I might make you some chilli meats or something, honey. You're craving chilli. You're craving chilli. <laughs> yeah, she likes chilli, my cat. She's a nut, this one. She loves her chilli. No, I gave her a chilli chip last night. and She rejected it and said, what's up with it? And now all of a sudden she's licking the chilli off it. Nice? Oi, nice? Yeah? <laughs> you like the seasoning? <laughs> she loves it. I'll be back.